In times of economic ruin, anarchy, and war, there comes a time for a hero with a kick-ass homemade water balloon launching bazooka. Time to get your enemies all wet. Hello there, viewers. My name is the Homie Game Guru. I'm going to show you something that's going to make your spring and summer a blast. Using just cardboard and some basic materials, I'm going to show you how to make your own water balloon slash ball bazooka. Yeah, you heard me. We're going to make a bazooka out of cardboard. And just out of fair warning, parents should always supervise the production of this at all times and when kids are playing with this. Though it's made out of cardboard, it's going to be one powerful tool and supervision should always be done. Now to get this process started, you're going to need the following. Some elastic bands, some white glue, a stapler with staples of course, a sharp cutting knife, a pencil, a pair of scissors, a ruler, some duct tape, two circular objects, one bigger than the other, some heavy books, some double corrugated cardboard and single corrugated cardboard, and two drawer handles. Now to get our bazooka going, the first thing we need to do is take the double corrugated cardboard that you've chosen and trace out two circles, one large and one slightly smaller. The large one, which I use as a normal dinner plate, is going to be the back or the base of the bazooka. The slightly smaller one, which I use an old pot lid, will become the inner launch mechanism. So once you have two sizes, what you need to do is take your pencil and trace around the perimeter of both circles. Then very carefully, you take your X-Acto knife and you cut those two circles out. Now with our circles cut out, the next step is to take a full sheet of Bristol board, just single corrugated, and with this square, I like the size and dimensions of it already, it's at the length I would like it to be, we're going to roll it up like it's a piece of paper. Cardboard is very flexible, especially single corrugated, it bends very easily, so we're going to roll it up. So once rolled, it kind of resembles a circle, don't worry if it's not perfectly circular. We take the side that was put together and joined and we tape it all the way down. I use strong duct tape to make sure it stays in place and I taped it all the way down and on the inside. So now that we have our circular body of our bazooka, what we do is we take the base that we cut out before and we glue this onto the actual base and this will become the actual body of the bazooka. But when you're gluing, you want to get two very heavy books or heavy objects that you could place on top so it puts the pressure down on the base so the glue could set and you want it to set for at least an hour preferably two hours and once the glue is set then we can move on to the next stage now while we let the glue set on the base and the body of the bazooka this might be a good opportunity to work on the actual shoulder support this is the part of the bazooka that just comfortably rests on our shoulder and we're able to pull back and launch the projectile water balloon without it moving or shimmering off our shoulder. So what I've done is I've taken the part of the double corrugated cardboard that we originally cut out the plate sized base of the bazooka. And what we're going to do is cut it into four quarters. One of those quarters I'm going to glue on the tape side of the bazooka near to the base, but just far enough where we could comfortably put it on our shoulder. So now that I have the shoulder rest glued on and setting, it's time to decide where we're going to put the side slots. These are the parts of the bazooka on either side where the handles are going to fit through so we can pull back and launch. So as you can see, I just ripped off a piece of the 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, stuck it onto the side. I don't want it too close to the front, but not too close to the back either. And all I'm going to do is just trace around the edge. No way, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then once this is done, take it off, and then we'll cut it out, and we'll do it on the same other side as well, and then we'll have our slots. Now for the actual body of the bazooka, it's almost done. There's just a little bit more we have to do with it, but most of the gluing is complete. So now it's time to really work on the heart and soul of the bazooka, and that is the actual launch plate. Now this is the smaller circle that we cut out before. As you can see, I took my little hooks and put them on each side 
doesn't matter if you're using screws or actual hooks you can fasten on, just put them on either side of your disc. And using this example here, this is a smaller disc, but I put this together to show you that I'm going to put back supports on it. The back supports ensures that it doesn't fall too deep into the bazooka. Now we are going to be using elastic bands to keep it into place, but just as a precaution and when you're pulling back, it's good to have a kind of point of no return or it won't go back any farther. So on this disc, we're using this display here, I just took two pieces of cardboard, glued them onto the back, and once you do that, this disc will only come as far as here. Measure from the bottom of your hole to the base, and that's how much cardboard you'll need. So just to summarize, our bazooka is all glued up, it's all intact. We have our launch disc, the one that goes inside. We glued some cardboard onto the back of it, which is going to stabilize it, which is the length from the bottom of the trigger hole all the way down to the base. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this into the bazooka, put the handles on each side through the trigger holes, and the last and most pivotal part is put in on the elastics. Now the whole point of the elastic is with our trigger here, we want to be able to have our launch device around here be able to pull back and then once we let go it catapults whatever's inside out. So we want to put the most amount of tension with elastics to cause that action to happen. And to do this we don't need anything too fancy. There's a regular bag of elastics that you can find almost anywhere and a stapler to keep it in place. So here's the inside perspective of our bazooka. As you can see there's the launch plate, here's the bottom where the tape is, the slots and the triggers right here. Now with the elastics, as you can see, I took a long elastic, bent it in half and then stapled the middle point into the side of the bazooka. I stapled it in around an inch to half an inch from the actual edge of the bazooka. You don't want it to be at the very edge because it could cause ripping and actually destroy the bazooka. So put it in about half an inch to an inch in. And you could use normal size elastics. I decided to use the longer elastic and I, I said split it in half. And what we're going to do with both sides of the elastic is stretch it all the way down and staple it in to the disc. So here's the inside of our bazooka. As you can see, once you have your elastics attached from near to the edge of the opening to the actual launch plate, this is what it should look like. Now because we're using just normal staples instead of industrial staples, if you do have industrial, please use them. They're a lot stronger, but because most people have normal staples in their household, there's a chance that with constant use, the staples will actually just come out. So what I did is I just put a little dab of glue at the edge of each staple, just to ensure that it stays in place. Just put a little bit of glue, make sure it does not touch the elastics, or it'll harden the elastic and it'll lose its, its elasticity. But just a little bit of glue, let it set for an hour, and it should be good to go. So now that we've finished our design for our water balloon bazooka, we've got our water balloon, Put it in, and now it's time to test it. Put into the whole thing, we crank it back, and now it's time to launch. So that wasn't too bad, we got about three or four meters on that. Remember, the tighter the elastics, the farther the distance you'll get. But three or four meters isn't too bad. So now that you got your own bazooka, have fun with it, tweak it, customize it, color it any way you want. I'm the homemade game guru. Remember, be safe, be careful, and always have fun. Until next time.